Okay, thanks very much for tuning into the video. This is one of my first pitch sessions in a long time. Um, it's also one of my first YouTube videos in a long time as well. So let's get into it. Um, in advance, I'm gonna apologize for some of the angles. I am waiting on a delivery of a new tripod. So at the moment I'm using my Gorillapod, which is on the floor. Um, so if most of the angles are from the floor up, that is why um, and I think some of the footage is actually a little bit dark as well so apologizing for that in advance this session itself it's just a little bit of an insight into some of the sessions that are on the plyometric and speed program which is still available on the website so you can go and check that out I will leave a link in the description for this video as well and it's just to shed a little bit of light on what you can expect to see in that and just to go and get back into doing a bit of training myself this session was actually incredibly short in terms of the length of it. I think that was because at the very end of this, I actually did a, about 10 full sprints. I only recorded two of them. I think that's because the camera was a little bit far away and it just wasn't great. So I didn't include all of them. And I think this just gives you a little bit better of an understanding of the warm up and the process that it's gonna take for you to get from, I suppose, the start of your session to actually doing maximal sprints during a training session because a lot of times sessions will focus on the content of the session as opposed to what you actually have to do to get there so in this video that's what i'm hoping to cover over and give you a better insight too i will be referencing a lot of my previous articles as well as to not make this video too long so the warm-up itself most of the warm-ups for pitch based sessions i will go with the ramp protocol so the ramp stands for raise activate mobilize and potentiate so it's four phases within the warm-up they can last anywhere between one and five minutes each again totaling about 20 minutes for your warm-up and each phase has a specific outcome which helps lead into the next phase itself so you're going from your start of your session which you'd see here which is literally just me jogging me doing kind of various exercises that I wanted to do on that specific day just to get my heart rate going and I was wearing a Fitbit during this as well so give me a better idea of where I was and it was just to get it from my resting heart rate which was about 40 or 50 up to something in and around 110 to 120 so that I'm not just going from 0 to 100 as fast as I can again putting yourself at a little bit more risk of um, injury but more so you're not going to get the full benefit from the session as well if you're not warmed up correctly you don't have to overthink the raise part of your session either again three or four minutes of exercise they're going to raise your heart rate get you a little bit warmer and get you focused in on what the goal of the session is as well straight after your raise section then you have your activate a lot of times when I'm training, the activate and the mobilize sections can be used interchangeably. Um, the activation session helps make the mobilize section easier sometimes, depending if you're feeling a little bit tighter. Um, and then sometimes the mobilize section can be a little bit lower intensity. And the activation se section can be a little bit um, higher intensity. It doesn't really make that much of a difference which one comes first but in terms of my session here i put my activation session before or section before my mobilize and like most sessions i'll always do some form of band work in and around the glutes and then i'll move into my kind of mobility stuff so here i'm just going to some usual exercise i use so we've got like my band mini band crab walks, some banded bodyweight squats, and I've got some external rotations. I tend to always use the same block of mini band exercises all the time. You can get creative with these if you want, you don't have to. These are the ones that I find that work better for myself. And we're looking at the three movements. So we're looking at hip extension, external rotation of the leg and we are looking at abduction as well so bringing the knee away from the midline of the body they are the three movements that the glutes are primarily responsible for and therefore those are the three movements that we are looking at during this part of our warm-up 
because this session was focused on linear sprinting and because I have spent an awful lot more time sitting down at a desk thoracic rotation and extension is going to be another key movement that we want to focus on when we're looking at the acceleration mechanics especially from a dead step or dead stop and we want that big split of the arms and we talk about moving our arms from hip to lip we do need a lot more mobility in and around that section of our back so pretty much from the base of my neck down as far as my mid back that starts to get a little bit tight especially for people who have a desk job or who spend a lot of time doing the same thing all the time so just using these two exercises just to focus on that so that we don't run into any problems down the line during the session finishing off this mobilization period then with some single leg glute bridges for this variation i actually pulled my toe off the floor um, was there any specific reason for me doing this probably not at the time but i did tend to feel this a little bit more in the hamstring and then i went from there into doing some seated hip rotations this has become a favorite of mine for myself and for any client who spends a lot of time sitting down i would recommend implementing this two maybe three times a week just to open up the hips doing four or five repetitions on each side should be enough if you do this correctly do this without using your hands the goal is to get the hip and the leg off the floor fully extended and then rotate it around so that's straight in front you can add a little bit more to this if you wanted to if you place a kettlebell dumbbell or a medicine ball out in front of you and then the goal would be to lift that leg up above whatever it is that you decide to have in front of you and then the last bit of this is just some um, seated shin boxes so we're working on loading um, the hip in external rotation just to get a bit more activation in there as well this is essentially where the session actually starts this is the blurred lines between the end of a warm-up and the start of a session you could technically class this as a warm-up exercise for me but for someone else who's just starting out this might be a little bit more intense so this is just a single leg iso hold so we've got the bottom leg the heel is actually off the floor you can barely see it and then the top leg the hip is flexed and we are trying to extend the knee as much as possible so you will feel this a lot in around the hip flexor and the more you extend the knee you get a lot more of an isometric hold on that quad as well i have recommended to some of my clients who are a little bit more advanced to do these daily what isometrics do and i've written about these before is that they allow you to get a lot more volume of training and um tension on specific areas without the need to include massive amounts of recovery time and they also are very good for tendon health and keeping you healthy long term as well trust me do these for 30 to 60 seconds each and you will feel the burn and you will also feel the benefit straight away as well i have um, included a lot more of these since i started having uh, problems with my achilles and my hips the next one was a split stance iso hold lunge this one again it's very kind of high you can't really notice it either but if you look at the front leg specifically i have the heel raised slightly off the floor you are kind of mimicking the angles at the ankle the knee and the hip during acceleration which is why i concluded this specific variation in this session it was probably the first time that I've done it as well but again if you look at the front leg they're kind of the same angles that you see during acceleration so if we are stronger in this position and we can resist deformation at specific joints we are going to be better prepared to produce force during these actions finishing off this tri set of isometric holds then with just a classic calf raise in an ideal world I would do this holding on to something so the balance wasn't an issue but I thought for today I would add in a little bit more of a balance component so that my feet are having to do a little bit more work as well. Moving into our potentiation section now, so the first bit of my plyos is going to be a snap down. I use some variation of this pretty much before every session just to include some sort of landing mechanics to get myself prepped. This is a single leg snap down and you can see 
the catch is quite high so minimal bend in the knee again which is going to be a little bit more specific to i suppose higher velocity sprinting as opposed to acceleration running second plyo is a snap down into a counter movement jump my technique on these is actually awful and um, i watched the back ideally you should jump and land in the same spot it's a long time since i did these myself the goal is to catch the landing and then jump as fast as you can so minimizing the time difference between um, stopping the eccentric and jumping again you will always find some form of broad jump in any of my sessions purely from the perspective that it, when you look at the takeoff angle of the broad jump itself it most closely represents that which you see during acceleration watching back this one for myself I probably could have got into a better angle at the ankle if you watch it again there is a lot of I suppose bending at the hip but not an awful lot at the knee and the ankle and it just it could be better all of these exercises were done for five reps so five reps if they're double leg exercises and five reps on each leg for single leg and they're only done for one set each the session wasn't focused in around the plyometrics but the plyometrics were included in the potentiation part of the session to make sure that i was ready for the next part of the session now arguably into probably the most important part of the session this is your sprint technique work for me on this particular day there was no real structure i pretty much laid out cones the blue one um, and the orange one that you can just about see on the floor is about 10 meters away and then there's another blue one another 10 meters away and because i've done these a lot for myself i can kind of pick or choose which ones i do which ones i feel i need more of and which ones to leave out so this one i think i did maybe five or six sets of it it was just a regular a skip but each time i did it i changed the emphasis on it so this one here now is more on smooth transition between each step getting into the correct position so that knee up toe up ankle below knee position and keeping my posture up nice and tall on the way back then it was just a case of thinking okay which one will i add next this is more of a b skip so that knee comes up and then the leg kind of extends out this one is more to do with high speed running which i will do another video on because it is very different to the acceleration phase of your sprinting which is primarily for field sports this variation then was the focus was on the step down so you can actually see the knee comes up nice and relaxed and then as that foot comes down to strike the floor there's a little bit more intent so the cue for myself here was to punch the floor and to put a little bit more force into the ground as well Next up was a wall drive. The setup for this is the most important part. So when you look at me here, my positioning could probably be a little bit better. Again, it's the first time I've done these in a long time, but in an ideal world, your angle should be probably between like 30 and 45 degrees to replicate the angle seen during acceleration. The goal here then is to drive the foot down into the floor as fast as you can trying to step back into the same position with every step so the first variation was just a single swap then we went to a double swap and then we went to a triple swap position you get into the, is the same every time so the knee is up the toe is up the ankle is below the knee roughly and you are trying to go through the same range of motion with each leg sometimes when people do these they short change the or they shorten the amount that they bring the knee up just so that they can do it a little bit quicker but you're trying to make this as specific as you possibly can for when you're actually accelerating and you don't want to be cutting yourself short at any time when we think about bringing the knee up the angle you want to see is roughly around 90 degrees at the hip because any higher than that and you're putting yourself in a bad position to produce a lot of force during your acceleration phase to 
finish that up then I went with 10 by 10 meter accelerations I took about a minute break in between and I typically program that for most people so for every 10 meters you sprint take about a 60 second break to allow yourself full recovery on the walk back and I went with 10 full reps altogether, and that was the session from start to finish it was probably about 30 or 40 minutes it wasn't that long um, but it came in the middle of a week where I was doing a lot more longer distance running as well it's been a long time since I was on the training pitch since I broke my arm so it was nice to get some sort of straight line sprinting in the next session I do will start to include a little bit more kind of lateral stuff multi-directional stuff and it'll be a bit more um, sport specific as well so hopefully you got something from it hopefully I won't make the next one too long um, first I'm doing this trying to get the voiceovers correct um, and I will see you guys in the next one or hear you guys in the next one